Hey y'all, I'm Ben. And I'm Christina. And we're the McMillan Express. And today we're gonna to talk to you about how RV systems work. The two core basic RV systems are going to be water and electric. So there's a couple different ways you can get fresh water in your RV. There's a fresh water tank, which you put fresh water into and you flip on your water pump and use your sinks as usual. The second way you can get fresh water, which is a city water connection, which just means that you plug your hose right into the water system. And again, you turn on your faucets and the water's there. Anytime that you are plugged into a city water connection, you want to be sure to use a water pressure regulator to control the water flow coming into your RV. So if you don't have a water pressure regulator, this could cause damage to your pipes or even the city water connection itself. There's three tanks in your RV. There's the black tank. That's where your toilet water goes. So any kind of sewage just goes to the black tank. The other type of tank is your gray tank. And in the gray tank is sink water and shower water. And then you have your fresh water tank. So this is our house panel here. This is going to monitor our fresh water, our black water, and our gray water levels. It also operates our propane water heater and also our electric water heater as well. So when it's time to dump your RV tanks, when your tanks are full or whenever it's time to go home, you're gonna start with your black tank. You're gonna make sure that your black tank is drained. And then you're gonna follow up by letting your gray water go to get any gunk out of that sewer hose that might possibly be left behind. So you can do this before you leave a campground or if you are boondocking, you can find the nearest RV dump station, which you can find online to take care of it there. There's two basic power systems that run through any RV, the 120 volt and the 12 volt systems. The 12 volt system is a DC power current, which is attached directly to your batteries. So lights, fans, that kind of thing. The 120 volt or the AC current, as it can be called, is just like the power in your home. It runs through to all the outlets. So anything that you plug in can be run with AC power. AC power is only going to work when you're plugged into shore power or a generator, or if you have an inverter attached to your battery system. Most RVs are either 30 or 50 amp. You have to be really careful about the different appliances that you use at the same time with either one of these voltages. You need to know what your RV can handle. So you need to be aware of how many watts each one of your electrical appliances uses and how many you can use at one time. If you have a 30 amp like we have, we have a dog bone so we can plug into a 50 amp outlet if that's all the campground can offer. There's a few different ways to recharge the batteries on your RV. Whenever you're towing your RV, your batteries are being charged through your tow vehicle. The second way is through plugging into shore power or a generator. Generators work just like shore power and depending on the size can power most things in your RV, including appliances like microwave and air conditioning. The third way would be through solar panels on sunny days. I know this is really confusing to wrap your head around at first, but use this diagram to help you understand it. Whenever you're about to plug your RV in anywhere, it's always best to use a surge protector, um, but also check the outlet with a non-contact voltage reader to make sure that all the wiring is done properly. Some appliances in your RV use propane to work, such as your gas furnace, your propane stove. Their appliances can be run off of power and propane like your refrigerator or your hot water heater. And that was an overview of how RV systems work. For more information, go to thorindustries.com. We're the McMillans, and we'll see you on the road.